Ja. Ja, das ist gut. Wäre gut. Das wäre gut indeed. been playing Minecraft like um from where did you come from? You don't act like three hours three or four hours maybe so I like looked at the clock because my sister was annoying me and then I noticed it was like a quarter like a quarter to nine and I was like shit <laughs> um So, no thought into my outfit or hairstyle or anything. So there we go. Now Albert isn't judging me. Look at me judging me. And I'm very, very, very sorry for not streaming yesterday. Depression just said, Nah, bish. You ain't gonna have any energy for that. Sad about. Minecraft is addicting. Why did nobody tell me? <laughs> oh, it's really addicting. I found my first uh, diamonds today. Six of them in total, and I found a puppy. I got a puppy. <laughs> and. Uh, oh yeah, I got working on the uh, attic of our house, uh, where our chant table is and stuff. Made it today. Um, we're making progress. I'm starting to think we have too many sheep. We don't really need that much. We didn't really need the wool anymore. I have too many projects going on. Oh, and I found a village today, so now I have a bell. Um, I got too many projects. Uh, I've taken on too many projects in Minecraft right now. Like, I need to make like this underwater secret uh, entrance to a cave. But like, I'm gonna have turtles if I find those. I don't know how I'll, how in the world I'm going to get them up to where I live, but we'll see. Oh good, I'm not muted. I thought I was muted. I was like, scared there for a sec. <sighs> yeah, I'm really, really sorry for not streaming yesterday. I'm all over the place right now. I'm, wait I'm waiting my uh, regular 10 minutes before I start the reading. Um, so I need to fill in that void. I keep glancing to my computer. I really need to stop doing that. Well, I guess it's because I'm looking if there are more people or something. Or, you know, full chat. Got my vital soup and our shirt on. Love it. <sighs> I'm thinking maybe I'll take um 
the story time stream tomorrow that was supposed to be on Wednesday because I don't know if my sisters got any meetings Wednesday that will inter to interfere with um uh well, my brain fart <sighs> I would interfere with the stream. I don't know if she's got any meetings. So. I might have to, like. Make Wednesday a no streaming day instead. And, like, change up my reading schedule a bit. So, I might be able to try to do it, like. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday instead. So we get four reading streams a week. Yeah. And maybe stream a bit earlier as well. Hmm. My clock's right up there. And that's why I'm looking at their, like, gauge. Maybe... Like, maybe I'll do it, like, a few hours earlier. So it won't be too late for me. And annoy the heck out of my older siblings. Like, get it together, you two. <laughs> oh, well. No, it doesn't really annoy them, actually. The both of them. It's about me being awkward. Wednesday, I'm going to finally get money. Which is, again, me reminding myself that I need to, like, figure out how to do donations and stuff. Or maybe that's just first when you get become an affiliate or something. I don't know. I still have a lot to research about um, Twitch. Oh yeah. <sighs> well, we left off with uh, Glory challenging the Queen of the Throne. The Queen of the Rain Wings of the Throne. Oh well, the current Queen, because like, they rotate every month. And every anyone can be Queen. Any female dragon can be Queen. So. But... There's going to be a contest instead of which is how they determine it if someone is challenging a queen. There's going to be a contest of the current queen. Um, bidding. Well, not bidding. Like what she chooses the contest to be. And Glory has no uh, idea any rain wings things. So, we'll see uh, what it is that Queen Magnificent chooses the contest to be. But I really hope, and I really think, like, Glory is gonna win anyway. And I mean, she's the kind of queen they really need right now because, like, Wings have been kidnapping Rain Wings for however long. And no one want to do a damn thing about it except for glory and a uh, little king kaju she rescued another dragonettes and dragons a few others you and she like ended the last chapter with a speech basically which was really cool which was a really cool speech and really some goosebumps right down my arms and neck. Yeah. And we're at the 10 minute mark, which means it's time to read. 
the next five chapters of the Hidden Kingdom. <laughs> Hope you got your stuffed animals and water ready. I know I'm going to need it. Chapter 26 Glory took a deep breath and studied her audience. Most of the dragons looked confused, but a few had dark purple stripes rippling over their scales. Guilt and shame living right next to pride on the color spectrum. Hmm, Glory thought, that's about all the noble speechifying I've got in me. Somehow, it had always seemed more believable and thus awkward in the scrolls she read. Stirring speech was always where chapters ended. <sighs> yeah. Way to break the fourth wall. Sutherland. Well done. She ended the last chapter with a speech. And Glory just said it here. <laughs> Sorry. The stirring speech was always where chapters ended, but right now a host of dragons were just staring at her, and she couldn't remember anything from the stories about what you did at the end of a noble speech, or how to slink away gracefully afterward. So there, said King Kaju, sticking out her tongue at Bromelade. Glory was pretty sure that wasn't it. What do we do now? King Kaju asked Glory brightly. The blue-gray was gone from her scales, and all her energy had returned. Never mind, I know exactly what we're doing first. Finding something decent to eat. Glory turned her back to her wide... Glory turned her back on her wide-eyed audience and focused on King Kaju. You go ahead. I have to tell my friends what just happened. And also find someone to teach me everything about rain wing skills in the next day. I can do that! King Kaju said. After I eat, I'm going to eat every piece of fruit in the rainforest. Where should I meet you? Try the healer's hut, Glory said with a sigh. Bring my group too. King Kaju shot off into the trees. Glory swirled her head around and checked that Silver was still asleep on her shoulder. Ignoring the crowd, she spread her wings and flew away. If she remembered Magnificent's direction correctly, the tree healer's tree house was not far. She spotted the red berries growing on the balcony and swooped down to a tree house whose leafy roof was started with skylight holes. Inside, only two of the beds were taken. One by webs, and the other by a sleeping rain wing with a bandage on his snout. As if he had bumped into a tree while flying around. Three rain wings in shades of white and shooting blue were gathered in a corner eating bananas and talking in low voices. Sure enough, Sunny and Starflight were crouched beside webs, watching him anxiously. Well, Sunny was watching webs. As usual, Starflight was watching Sunny. Aww. Webs was sprawled across a nest of spider-shaped leaves in the sunlight. He was asleep, breathing peacefully for the first time since Blister had attacked him. Sunny was right. The cactus juice clearly was working. The, scra the scratch on his tail wasn't completely healed, but the edges looked much less raw, and the black had faded instead of spreading further. I guess you saved them. Gloria remarked, sliding up beside them. I hope so, Sunny said. But he's still really sad. He keeps mumbling in his sleep about how it's his fault the Skywings found and destroyed the Summer Palace. Well, it is, Gloria said. Oh, very sympathetic, Starflight said. Come on. Webs didn't know Crocodile was following him. Crocodile, the last dragon Gloria had used to venom on before the Night Kingdom. She saw a flash of the Mudwing's terrified face and shoved the, fo the thought aside. That was self-defense. It was always self-defense. The kind of self-defense her fellow Rainwings really needed to learn. Sunny brushed Glory's shoulders with her wing, and Glory flinched back. You should put something on your scratches, Sunny said. This isn't a scratch, Gloria informed her, pointing to a bleeding slash on her back leg, which had started to throb in a fiercely painful way. 
it's a battle wound. <laughs> yes, you're very tough and scary, Sunny said. She beckoned to the white and blue rain wings while Glory wondered if that was sarcasm. Sarcasm from Sunny? It didn't seem likely. She twisted to watch as the rain wings dubbed some kind of pace on her injuries. Watch it, she hissed. But after a moment, the stinging faded, and all she could feel was cool numbness. Glory studied the wounds and sniffed the paste, which smelled a bit like mint. Hmm, she said finally. A dragon up named King Kaju is on her way here. She needs some of that too. She caught Sunny's significant look and gave the healers a nod. Thanks. Where is your army? Starfight asked Glory. Only a little snidely. They're a oh, work in progress, said Glory. Sunny leaned over webs, adjusting the dressing on his injury. Uh, so, by the way, Glory went on, I've decided to be the queen of the rain wings. Sunny tripped and web slid out an oof as she landed on him, but he didn't wake up. Starflight turned to stare at Glory incredulously. But why? You never wanted to be a queen, he said. You don't know that, said Glory. She was aware of the healers hovering just within earshot. Trying to look busy, but obviously eavesdropping. It just didn't come up because we were too busy hearing about how much Tsunami wanted to be queen. <laughs> anyway, I have to if I want to leave them into battle against the Nightwings. Battle? Starflight said anxiously. I think you'll be a great queen, said Sunny with a flutter of her golden wings. Horrible, agreed the sloth, waking up and leaning around Glory's neck. Maybe we don't have to fight the Night Wings, Starflight said in a plaintive voice. Plaintive voice. Let me talk to them. Maybe I can find out why they've been taking Ring Wings in the first place. <sighs> they still need rescuing, Glory snapped. Maybe the Night Wings will let them go, Starflight said. Maybe if I explain to them that keeping dragons tied up in caves is wrong, Glory said, shock. Sure. That's probably never occurred to them, or that they should have asked politely before sealing rainbow venom. venom. And don't forget the mud wings, Sunny added. Why did they kill those two soldiers? Glory, ha Glory had forgotten about the dead mud wings. If that had been the night wings too, what imperia were they up to? <sighs> Listen, she said to Starlight. I know you don't want to meet your tribe for the first time on the opposite side of the, of the battlefield, but they can't be trusted. It's not even safe for you. We have no idea where the, night where the Deathbringer was supposed to kill you as well. They would never kill me, Starflight protested. I'm one of them. Barely, said Glory. Anyway, I'd rather find out the truth with a whole lot of venom as backup, wouldn't you? Starflight twisted his talons together. Glory glanced out the nearest window and saw a pair of dragons shift quickly to camouflage on the branch outside. She squinted and thought she could see shimmers of movement on several other branches as well. Apparently, her tribe was finally interested in her. Wait, said Sunny, sitting up and flaring her wings. If you want to be queen, don't you have to kill Magnificent? They have this whole no-killing way of taking the throne, Glory said. They're rain wings, of course they do. They do? That's fantastic! Sunny said with unexpected intensity. That's how all the tribes should do it. Maybe after we stop the war, we can teach everyone the rain wing way of changing queens. Glory gave her a quizzical look. That was a lot of enthusiasm for rain wing way of doing things. She was pretty sure most dragons wouldn't feel that way. Why don't we take our revolution one step at a time? She said, flicking her tail at Sunny. The other tribes have been doing things away for hundreds of years. So? Sunny said, things can change. <sighs> if queens didn't kill their challengers, Starflight interjected. That, what would stop the challengers from trying again the next day and the next? 
or if the challenger won, the queen would just could just come back to try and take it back. Instead of ruling her kingdom, a queen would have to spend all her time simply trying to keep her throne. Then we make new rules, Sunny said stubbornly. Like, she can only be challenged a certain times a of a year. Or each challenger can twi try twice before giving up. Or something like that. We're dragons, not caterpillars. We can do things differently if we choose to. Dragons are dragons, Sunny. Glory said, fighting is part of our nature. Not for the rain wings, Sunny said. There are dragons too, but... but there's something wrong with them, Glory thought. She didn't want to say that out loud with the healers listening, and however many dragons were just outside the window, but she knew Starflight must be thinking it too. Maybe Ringwings are more evolved than the rest of us, Sunny said. Maybe all dragons should try to be more like them. They're happy, aren't they? True, Glory thought, but maybe I could have been happy as Queen Scarlet's prisoner as long as I got to lie in the sun and eat pineapple all day. And then where would my friends be? I don't think it's enough just to be happy, Glory said slowly. I think you have to care about something too. Like other dragons who need you, for instance. And you still have to be ready to fight, just in case some creepy, less evolved dragons decide to invade your territory and kidnap a bunch of you. I don't believe anyone can be truly happy without scrolls, Starflight said wistfully. I haven't seen a scroll in weeks and I'm perfectly miserable. Oh, poor Starflight, Sunny said with genuine sympathy, brushing his wings with hers. Well, when Glory is queen, she can fix all that. Starflight can teach everyone to read, and Tsunami can teach them to defend themselves. Um, and we'll make a list of all the eggs and all the dragons in the tribe so no one will ever get lost again. Plus, save the missing rain wings and choose the sand wing queen and stop the war. Glory said, no problem, give me a week. Sunny beamed as if this sounded like a perfectly reasonable plan to her. When I'm queen, Glory thought, I like the sound of that. Through one of the windows, Glory saw King Kaiju and Mangrove approaching. A few more curious dragons were tailing them through the trees, and Glory spotted more eyes watching from the leaves. Mangrove was an unexpected, a doubled mixture of bright yellow and lime green. Excited and terrified, she thought, but more complicated. With the return of King Kaiju, now he knew that Orchid was alive, but he also knew what an awful place she was in and how hard it would be to get her back. Glory hoped Clay and Tsunami were ready to stop him if he dashed, if he tried to dash through the tunnel and do any rescuing by himself. Well, before we change the fundamental essence of dragons and swamp and revamp the Rainwing tribe, first we have to win. First I have to win, she said. So right now, I have to go train for those contests thing tomorrow. If anyone wants to come watch while the others got the tunnel, it's in the arboretum at sunrise. I'll be there, Sunny said. It'll be nice to know a queen we actually like. If you win, Starflight added gloomily. I will win, Glory said, glancing again. Glancing again at Mangrove's tail scales, she thought of Orchid and the other rainforest dragons, chained and muscled and fed with rotting prey, imprisoned away from the sun and their own tribe. I have to. End of chapter 26. <coughs> that was pretty long for my voice. I really hope that the challenge, well, the contest actually happens 
uh, in the next four chapters or else I'm going to be left at the edge of my seat. Papaya, Glory said, stop root, Tangelo, Tangelo, Clementine, Clementine, Kumbo, Dragonberry, Mango, Pear Fruit, and that one, so trick that only looks like a fruit, but it's actually a poorly designed snail. She poked the purple snail shell with one claw, and its nervous antennae vanished again. The sun was high above them, and the morning rain had stopped. Although the leaves kept showering the dragons every time someone bounced through and shook the trees. All the toucans and parrots and lorikeets that had disappeared during the rainfall were back, perched on the highest branches and hollering joyfully at the sun as if they'd never expected to see it again. And now Glory could identify all the birds in sight after studying with mangrove and kinkaji all morning. Birds, insects, flowers, fruit, anything magnificent might test her on, she would memorize. Whenever she felt her brain getting tired, she'd think of a, the smoky air choking the caves uh, of the rain wings, and that would snap her back into focus. Wow! said King Kaju. She blinked large, dark eyes at Glory. How did you learn all that so fast? You've really never had any of these before? Mangrove asked, surveying the 40 or so fruits arranged around the platform. One or two, maybe, said Glory. I should taste them all too, right? Just in case she chooses a blind taste test. I don't think anyone's ever thought of that before, said Mangrove, but you never know. He peeled the banana with a few swipes of his claw and tossed it to her. <laughs> Clay would dominate a blind taint test, Sunny offered from her perch in the trees above them. Sunlight danced on her golden scales. A small orange monkey with a black face was playing with her tail, but Sunny didn't either didn't notice or didn't mind. I would, Clay said wistfully. Are you going to eat that whole thing? Glory took another bite and then lobbed the rest of it at him. Clay fumbled to catch it and ended up with a banana smeared all over his talons. He licked it off with a concentrated, with a contented expression. You can practice your camouflage at the same time, Mangrove said. See if you can match this mango. He rolled it. He rolled it to her with his nose. There we go. Glory studied the outside of the mango and let her scales slowly turn a dull green with black speckles shading to warm red around her wings and tail. So cool, said Sunny. Are you going to eat that whole thing? Clay asked. Glory laughed. Clay, let me at least try it. She tried slicing it open as neatly as Mangrove had opened the banana and made a terrific mess. Cheerful orange yellow gulps squirted all over her scales, and Silva scrambled down Glory's arm to lick it up. Stop wasting time, she scolded herself as she helped the slot to balance. The day is half gone, and you still need to practice venom targeting and tree gliding and camouflage. I'm not sure this is the right time to tell you this, Sunny said, but you're being watched. Glory and Mangrove looked up sharply. She had asked him to choose a spot where they could practice without attracting too much attention. It was unsettling to keep finding rainwing eyes on her every time she turned around. The whole tribe must know she wasn't a normal rainwing, but they didn't need to see all her mistakes the day before she tried to become their queen. But Sunny was right. Even though they were in a secluded corner of the village, Glory could see dragon heads peering around tree trunks, tree trunks, and poking out of hammocks, staring her way. <laughs> Sorry, staring her way. As she whipped her head around to look at them, most of them quickly changed color or disappeared. But if she'd spotted those few, she could 
she could imagine how many more might be out there camouflaged and curious about the challenger for the throne. Well, take me or leave me, Glory thought. I'm not a typical rain wing, but maybe that's what you need for a queen. Alright, what can we do next? She asked, popping berries in her mouth. Raspberries is sharper than cloudberries. Figs taste like desert winds. Wow is are the ones I could eat every day for the rest of the time. Let them practice. Next is sun time, King Kaji said, and Mangrove nodded with a glance at the sky. Are you crazy? Glory said. She seized a papaya and accidentally crushed it between her front talons. I have one day to prepare for this. I'm not going to spend it snoozing like it's lock. Sun time isn't about snoozing, Mangrove said sternly. It's about recharging. Furble, furble, agreed Glory's sloth, climbing up to tug on Glory's ears. Gonna change the music real quick. I'd rather study, Glory said. She saw King Katya's crestfallen face and added, You two can go ahead. I'll practice on my own. You will not, said Mangrove. You need this energy to win. You will sleep with You will sleep if we all have to sit on you to make it happen. I volunteer, Clay said. I'm a world champion at sitting on my friends. Clay Glory said over Sunny's giggling. This isn't a joke. I ha I don't have time to be lazy. Glory has some issues with the word lazy, Sunny announced. Our guardians used to call her that all the time, so she feels like she needs to prove something by showing she doesn't need to sleep. Glory flared her rough and glared at Sunny. Excuse me, are you explaining me? Sunny shifted her wings in a friendly shrug. Well, that's what Starflight said, she offered, but it makes sense to me. Sleeping when you need to is not lazy, said Mangrove. That is a crazy dragon's way of thinking. Sleeping is as important as breathing. You wouldn't skip that because there's no time for it. Or food, Clay agreed. You can't skip sleeping or food. The mudwing dragonette hopped off his branch and thudded down next to her, squashing a mango under his big claw. He crouched so his brown eyes were directly even with Glory's. Silver leaned over Glory's head and tried to poke at his horns. Glory, he said, stop panicking for one moment and think about how you feel right now. And I don't mean mad, I mean physically. I'm not panicking, Glory said, ruffled. I'm pl I am pretty close to mad, though. And? He prompted. And getting closer. She shot back. He gave her a patient sm look. And exhausted, Glory realized. As she took a deep breath, she hadn't really slept in a, well, in a really long time. Not properly. <sighs> she thought about the brush of sunlight on her scales. Fine, she snapped. But make, wake me up in one hour, understand? We'll see, Clay said. <laughs> Cheered the sloth. Come on, King Kaju said excitedly. I know the best spot. As Glory, King Kaju, and Mangrove took off, there was a flurry of wing beats throughout the trees around them as camouflaged rain wings. None too sadly followed them. King Kaju led the way to a platform that was built right above the treetops, with no leaves between it and the blue arc of the sky. The surface dipped in the center and was lined with cloud soft pink blossoms growing along the vines that were wo woven around the wood. You take this spot, King Kaji said, pointing to the hollow in the middle. Glory reluctantly curled, in the vi curled up in the vines and immediately felt warmth soaking into her bones. Silver flopped happily next to her 
and the extra spot into her spot on Glory's shoulder and snuggled in. Glory jumped as King Katya nestled on one side of her and Mangrove settled on the other. That answered that question. All the rain wings didn't mind touching one another. So it was just her who had a problem with it. Uh, um, she started to say, but the two rain wings were already deep, breathing deeply. Glory closed her eyes, certain she'd never fall asleep like this. A moment later, she opened them and found herself looking into the amber eyes of Queen Scarlet. End of chapter 28. Oh, damn! That's not good. Is she having a nightmare? Oh, no. Oh, dear. I have a feeling we're not going to get to read the contest in the next three chapters. <laughs> but we never know until we read them, right? Right now, we need to see if this is a nightmare or not. Chapter 28 Glory leaped back with a hiss and opened her mouth. Don't you dare, snarled the queen. Haven't you done enough already? Glory paused, studying the sky wing's face. It was perfect, as perfect as it had been, as it had ever been. A shimmering orange like the orchids growing from the moss behind her, with the small rubies above her eyes glittering in the bright sunlight. And then Scarlet's whole body flickered somehow. And under the perfect scales, Glory saw something dark and melted, a horrible smeared mess where her face used to be. Behind Scarlet, she caught a glimpse of a dim room with glass jars hanging from the ceiling, some of them glowing strangely. Oh, you're not really here, Glory said, as the rainforest reappeared and Scarlet's scales smoothed back to perfect. The queen was perched on the edge of Glory's sleeping platform, but now that Glory looked closely, she could see that the skywing's claws didn't sink into the leaves below her. Glory had sat down and curled her tail around her talons. King Kachu and Mangrove were fast asleep on either side of her. The sloth was snoring on her shoulder, and the sun had climbed higher in the sky. Am I even awake? Glory asked. No, said Scarlet. I've been trying to catch you asleep for days. She held up a small star-shaped sapphire that glowed an eerie blue light through her claws. Once I realized what this was. A dream visitor, Glory said, recognizing the shape from her scrolls. I read about those. An animus dragon made those made three of them hundreds of years ago, right? I thought the last one in existence was lost with the Sandwing treasure when the scavenger killed Queen Oasis and stole it all. Apparently not, Scarlet said, opening her claws to glance down at it. So you're really alive, Glory said. You don't sound as disappointed as I thought you would be, Glo Scarlet said. Glory flickered Glory flicked her tail. It's not that I want you to hurt, I just... I just want you not trying to kill us. I never tried to kill you, Scarlet pointed out. I quite liked you. We could have a, had a thrilling time together. She stood up and paced toward Glory until their snouts were almost nose to nose. Which reminds me, I wanted to try something. Abruptly, she lashed out with her free talent, slashing at Glory's, plate, at Glory's face. Her, her claws sliced right through Glory's scales, like raindrops splashing ice wa icy water over her. It was cold, but it didn't hurt. Scarlet's claws weren't really there. Glory fixed that thought in her head as Scarlet lunged again. She closed her eyes and sat perfectly still. There was nothing the Skywing Queen could do to her right now. 
she was no more dangerous than any dream. After a few moments, Glory opened her eyes again and Scarlet stepped back, hissing. Smoke rose up from her nose, winding around her horns, and the dark, misshapen snout underneath flickered through again for a moment, along with the room beyond. Where are you? Glory asked. If I tell you, will you find me and free me? Scarlet asked. No likely, Gloria, Glory said. Wait, let me think. Absolutely, definitely not. But you owe me, Scarlet said, stamping one foot. Glory tilted her head sideways. How exactly do you figure that? For what you did to me, Scarlet said. I was beautiful before. I had everything. Including a pretty rainbow dragon on a tree, Glory said. I remember. If you don't free me, Scarlet said, I will find a way out of here, and then I find you. And then when I find you, I will kill you. You know, something tells me that's on your gender aisle way, Glory said. Scarlet hissed deep in her throat and then shot a blast of flame in Glory's face. Calm and blue, Glory thought. Stay calm and blue. Is someone keeping you a prisoner? Glory asked. A thought occurred to her. Is it that rain? Is it the night wings? If you're not going to help me, Scarlet growled, I'll find someone else who will. And suddenly she was gone, leaving only a curl of smoke in the air. When you walk in the direction of Wendell, when you step into the mud, that's a place to fall in love with. So there's my answer. Scarlet is alive. Glory notices that. Sorry, I don't. Gonna be music. <sighs> Gloria notices that the leaves below her were shaking. Wait, that's me. Kinkaju stirred as if she felt Glory shaking too. She nestled closer and Glory felt sun drenched warmth along her scales. Slowly, she closed her eyes, breathing deeply, and drifted off, and drifted out of the dream. When she woke up, she knew right away it had been longer than an hour. Silva was crouched in front of her, stroking Glory's nose with a worried expression. The other two were awake and, and stretching contently. Contentedly. Do you, don't you feel better? King Kaju asked. Yes. Glory admitted. Yeah, no. Then let's do tree. That was not mangrove. Then let's do tree gliding together, King Kaji said cheerfully. Fine by me, said mangrove. And Glory nodded. She was too shaken to argue. She wondered what Scarlet would think of Glory becoming queen of the rain wings. She wondered if being a queen would make her any safer. Sunny and Clay waved from their branch down below. Should I tell them? I should tell them. I will tell them, but not yet. Glory wanted to talk to Starflight first to see what he could remember about dream visitors and if he could guess anything about the room she'd been seen behind Scarlet. His giant brain was what she needed for a puzzle like this. As Glory lifted into the sky, setting off a commotion of hidden wings, she wondered where the Skywing Queen was and when she would see her again. End of chapter 28. Okay. I really, I, I really want to read the contest today. I don't know why. I'm just excited for it, okay? But I really don't think we will get to read it today. I think we'll end up I think we'll end up on a cliffhanger again. That seems to happen a lot. 
I do apologize for that. It is not planned. It is never planned when we ended up on a cliffhanger. Chapter 29 The Arboretum, as it turned out, was the heart of the Rainwing Village. Vines and branches were wo woven tightly together to form a wide field high above the ground, open to the sky and surrounded by treehouses, walkways and hammocks. Several of the treehouses around the edge appeared to be set up for trading fruits and flower gardens. Brilliant blue and coppery orange birds darted through the leaves, chattering and calling to one another like an audience gathering for a performance. There seemed to be room for the entire village to gather around the edges of the circle, and it looked like the entire village had showed up. Had shown up. Oh, okay, I think we might actually be reading the contest in this chapter, maybe. The rumble of dragon voices mixed with the chirping of slots and sent shivers through the wooden walkway where Gloria stood, studying the green stadium in front of her. Gloria was reminded uncomfortably of the ring of the Skywing arena where her friends had battled for Queen Scarlet's amusements. From the way Tsunami's tail was switching, Glory guessed she felt the same way. This is unfair. Tsunami said, You win. You'll have to call me your majesty. Glory said, grinning, I know. Won't that be hilarious? Arr, and your face will look like that all the time, Tsunami said. It's going to be so hard not to bite you. But if you do, my gods will throw you in my dungeons, Glory said with an imperious wave of her talons. Railings don't have dungeons, King Kaju pointed out. There's a surprise! Well... No, that wasn't King Kaju. There's a surprise. Well, I'll make one just for Tsunami. Glory said. Maybe I should have let Starflight come to this instead. That wasn't Glory. Maybe I should have let Starflight come to this instead, Tsunami said. Postpone my agony a little bit. Starflight and Clay were taking a shift watching the Nightwing tunnel. They'd seen nothing come out of it yet. Not as much as a puff of smoke. Glory found that both Glory found that both alarming and reassuring. Maybe the Nightwings were afraid to fight the Rainwings. That would make attracting them a bit easier. Not attracting, attacking them a bit easier. She hadn't had a chance to talk to Starflight yet. He'd stayed out by the tunnel all night. I'll talk to him right after the contest, she thought. Telling him about Queen Scarlet ought to distract him from fretting about fighting Nightwings. And I cannot think about Queen Scarlet right now. I could have watched the tunnel, Sunny said. I don't understand. Why no one will let me take a turn on guard? Well, for one thing, I need you here to cheer me on, Glory said. I could do that better than you. I think I'm being patronized, Sunny said. She poked the wooden platform below them from the harmless point of her tail. But I'll cheer for you anyway. You're definitely going to win. I'm not worried. Oh, I need to find her voice again. I'm not worried. Glory was a little worried. For one thing, her permanent had apparently multiplied overnight. What? Queen Magnificent was waiting at the center of the canopy. Her scales were... Resplendently? What? Is that word? Why are there so many words I have no idea about? Resplendently. Res blah, blah, blah. Purple. With scalloped gold etching on each individual scale. Which was a color trick Glory had never tried. She had taken off most of her flower necklaces, replacing them with one small wreath of lilies on her rough which had the effect of looking like a lazy white crown. Arrayed behind her were what <laughs> Array 
laid behind her were four more ringlings, all quite large, quite beautiful, and quite outraged, judging from their expressions and colouring. Where are they? Glory asked King Kaju. The other queens? King Kaju whispered. I mean, you know, the ones who take turns being queen. I guess they don't particularly like... I guess they don't particularly want you to take their job either. Are any of them better than Magnificent? Glory asked. Maybe there was another option. It didn't have to be her, as long as the Rainwings had a queen who could take care of them. But Kinkachi was shaking her head. They're all pretty much the same, she said. She pointed to one of the queens, who looked like she'd eaten a few too many avocados and papayas during her reign. That one's dazzling. She'll grant anyone anything if they ask... She'll grant anyone anything they ask if they bring her enough tribute. She has to throw... She has the throne before Magnificent. After Magnificent, it passes to Grandeur. Grandeur was a stately older dragon with half asleep eyes and a sour expression. Her ruff was indignantly pale orange at the moment, but the rest of her scales were pale lavender and seemed to glitter with tiny dewdrops. During her reign, King Kaju said, she'll only see pre She'll only see petitioners once a week for an hour. First come, first serve. And if you don't get in during that hour, you have to wait until next week. The lines practically stretch around the jungle. And then she says not... And then she says no to pretty much everything. She's really, really old. She's been one of the queens for as long as anyone can remember. King Kaju pointed to the next dragon, who had two slots flopped on her back and one more perched in the curve of her tail. This queen had scales the same silvery color as the slots, with a soft shimmer to them that looked like wind brushing through their fur. That's exquisite, said King Kaju, obsessed with slots. She has about 20 more at home. Talks about them constantly, feeds them the best fruits, grooms them with her own claws, and whenever she's queen, she has everyone build tiny hammocks for the sloths to sleep in and weave them tiny flower necklaces. No dragon is as important to her as these sloths. Dazzling, grander, exquisite, Glory muttered, adding those to the list of things she'd memorized in the last day. And the last one, let me guess, as splendiferous, astonishing, too beautiful for dragon eyes to bear. That's fruit bat, said King Kachu. All right, said Glory, didn't see that coming. Who picks the names for newly hatched dragonettes if no one has any parents here? There's a list we tackled through. King Kachu said, usually the ones with shiny names are more likely to want to be queen. Fruit bat is an exception. She's working on the this ex She's working on this experiment to see if she can take the scent out of flowers and make herself smell more like them all the time. Perfume. Well, ish perfume ish, I guess. It's like we don't smell that perfume all the time. It fades. <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> Glory wrinkled her nose. Weird, but interesting at least. What in the world does that have to do with being queen? King Kaju shrugged. It's not going very well. She's been working on it for something like 30 years. She started taking a turn as queen so that she could have access to the royal gardens, and by the end of her month, the gardens are always a wreck. My friend, friend Tamarine is one of the flower caretakers, and it drives her crazy. <sighs> Sounds like Magnificent might be the best of all of them, Glory said, twisting one claw through a hole in the wood. Magnificent's main problem is that she's forgetful, King Kaju pointed out. She can never remember 
what she's agreed to or what's going on in her tri in the tribe or who asked her for what and she doesn't really care. We are all pretty used to it by now. She turned her dark, shining eyes to Glory. But if we had you as our queen instead, then everything would be different. I hope so, Glory thought. I hope different in a good way, but what if I'm no better than they are? She glanced across at Bat Fruit Bat, who had her nose buried in a massive orchid necklace hung around her neck. Alright, I'm pretty sure I'll be better than some of them. The old dragon who had been in the queen's treehouse slithered out to stand next to Magnificent. He squinted around and beckoned to Glory. <laughs> Wish me luck, Glory muttered, handing her sloth to Sunny. Sunny burbled something. Sunny. So. Okay. Why am I so gassy right now? Ugh. Silver burbled something anxious sounding and clambered immediately up onto Sunny's head for the best view. I'm reading ahead. Stop it, stop it! Don't do that! Magnificent flattened her ruff and looked down her nose as Glory landed in front of her. The other four queens lashed their tails. So, what's the plan? Glory said, shaking out her wings. I have to beat all five of you. She'd chosen a summery gold color for her scales that matched the, 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 that matched the dragonflies darting through the tree tops. I guess that's a color. I don't know. She was determined to stay that color throughout the contents, no matter what Magnificent threw at her. Glory's first goal, don't let anyone see that you're upset or angry, or worst of all, scared. No, Handsome interjected before Magnificent could answer. That is not the tradition. The challenger competes only against the current queen. But my fellow royalty didn't want to be less out, said Magnificent, so I welcome into the competition. She smiled in a way that made Glory want to strangle her with a hammock. Which means you're going to need a team as well. I don't have a team. Glory started and then stopped herself. Well, I kind of do. She turned and glanced back at Sunny and Tsunami, who were watching with round eyes from the platform. <sighs> I don't need to drag the others into this. Surely I can defeat the queens myself. What can five rain wings do that I can't? And everyone be impressed if I beat them all? All of them, all by myself, with no help whatsoever. She flexed her wings, which were still sore from the ropes that had bound them tightly just one day earlier. This line of thinking felt familiar. It was how she had convinced herself to go out alone as bait. And if I made it back, didn't I? I could have handled that situation fine on my own. But she knew that wasn't true. Without King Kaju, Clay, and Deathbringer, she'd still be stuck in a Nightwing prison, or perhaps even dead, if the Nightwings had had time to figure out who she was. So don't be an idiot. Winning the throne will, winning the throne with help, won't let you any mess up. <laughs> Gonna try that one again. So don't be an idiot. Winning the throne with help won't make you any less of a queen. You get to choose your dragons, said Magnificent, any four you wish. That makes it easy for me. Glory thought she had exactly four friends in the world after all. She could ask Mangrove to go guard the tunnel and send back Starflight and Clay. She opened her mouth to call him and hesitated. Maybe a little too easy. She studied a dazzling, grander, exquisite, and fruit bat. They looked ready, alert, and eager to compete. Not a look she'd seen on many rain wings before. They're convinced they're going to win. Go ahead, said the queen. Call them out here, anyone you like. Glory to little ahead at Magnificent. This is a trick. She wants me to make my friends. And then the contents, contest will involve camouflage or venom or something that only rain wings can do. Not only that, but my future subjects would think I trust outsiders more than I trust them. Which, frankly, I do, 
because most of my wings are hopelessly incompetent. Right now, I need their help. I choose... Kinkaju, Glory said. She heard a loud squeak of surprise behind her and a murmur of rain through the watching dragons. A three-year-old dragonette, said Magnificent Oxley. That should be, this should be funny. And I choose Mangrove, Glory went on, ignoring her. Mangrove stepped out of the crowd opposite her and gave her a small bow. Orchid was still out there. He'd do anything to save her. Glory could count on that. Now it got a little harder. Glory closed her eyes and sighed. I choose Jambu. Yes! Her brother shouted, leaping into the air. That's me! <laughs> he bounced across the vines toward her, grinning all over his goofy pink face. Who else? Glory ran through the dragons she'd met in the rainforest. Elma, Bromelade, Coconut. Not a promising set. She didn't know much about any of them, but none of them had impressed her as team players. King Kaju came up beside her, fidgeting excitedly and spilling deep purple-blue bubbles through her green scales. Glory remembered someone the little dragonette had mentioned when she was describing the queens. It was a risk choosing a dragon she'd never met, but she couldn't be worse than any other dragon. Than any other rain wing. And I choose Tamarine. She said, all Glory knew about her was that she was friends from King Kaju. She cared about her work with the flowers, and she wasn't the biggest fan of Fruit Bat. Which sounded like three good features to Glory. The crowd murmured a great again. Sounding like waves rushing in, in from the ocean. And Queen Magnificent Barg a startled laugh. Tamarine, King Kaju cried, but are you sure? Too late, said Magnificent. That's who she chose. That's who she chose. Someone give Tamarine a shove in the right direction. A small dragon popped out of the crowd and stumbled forward a few steps, then stopped. She stood very still, with waves of pale green rippling across her scales. Her eyes were an odd light shade of blue and stared dark blankly past Glory at the trees. What is it? Glory asked, glancing at Kinkaju. Why shouldn't I have picked her? Why shouldn't I pick her? You can, said Kinkaju. It's just that Tamarin is blind. End of chapter 29. Oh dear! Well... <laughs> you know what? I really think Tamarin is going to surprise them. She's got some tricks of her... Um, I was gonna say sleeve, but... She's got some tricks of her scales. I'm sure of it. Ugh. All these random bots keep text and keep DMing me on Instagram. Just got an inf a notification of a new one. It's annoying as heck. Anywho, chapter 30. Oh! I'm excited. How? Oh. Two, four, six, eight. Nine and a bit. Okay. King Kaju hurried forward and whispered in her friend's ear, then led Tamarin over to Glory. The blind rain wing moved confidently across the unsteady vine surface, as if she knew where every leaf and every gap would be. She kept her wings up and out like an insect's antennae. This is Glory, King Kaju said, our next queen. She held out Tamarin's front talons to feel Glory's face and wings. Why would you pick me? Tamarin blurted. She wore only one garland of flowers around her shoulders. 
The shades of red and pink and purple didn't match it at all, but they smell amazing. It made Gloria think of coconuts and honey without making her hungry. I told her about you, said Kinkaju. Her voice faltered a little, giving away that she hadn't quite mentioned everything. I have no idea there were any blind dragons, except in old coral stories, Gloria said. She fluttered a wing in front of Tamarin's eyes, but the rain wing didn't think. Sorry, I'm reading forward again. How do you fly between the trees? How do you land? Don't you accidentally walk off platforms and fall out of hammocks all the time? <laughs> Not anymore, Tamarin answered. The green was starting to fade from her scales as she relaxed. The first year, yes, all the time. She lifted her wings higher to reveal an old scar twisting across her underbelly. Glory spotted a few others in Tamarin's wings and neck. These weren't like the battle scars the war had given so many dragons. These told the story of a tiny dragonette crashing into trees, plummeting off walkways, and impaling herself on stray branches as she tried to learn to fly in total darkness. Aww. But everyone took care of me, Tamarin said. But there was always a dragon watching me, helping me and teaching me. Glory glanced at their watching tribe. Shoo. Would have guessed that no one would take responsibility for a little blind dragonette. Instead, everyone had, which gave her hope. And now I have the village memorized, so I know all the distances and obstacles. Tamarin ruffled. Tamarin's ruff folded down and then opened again, as if she was sensing a shifting wind current. The shifting wind current. Magnificent Queen Magnificent unfurled her purple wings and stood up on her back dance. Let's begin, she called, unless you've changed your mind. Yeah. We're ready, Glory said. No inspiring speech, Jambu said, sounding disappointed. King Kaju and Man Mangrove tilted their snout toward her. It's expectantly. Cameron's ears twitched. I gave one yesterday, Glory protested. So now do one just for us, King Kaji said. Haske, <laughs> I, 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 I read ahead. I'm sorry, I can't. I can't help it. <laughs> but I'm excited when reading. When I'm when I'm reading something and I'm excited for it, I tend to read ahead. It's a bad habit. It, it let me know that this is something I actually truly like to read. And I'm excited for it. So, now do one just for us! King Kaji said. Her scales kept shifting to match the dark green leaves below them. As if she was trying to hide whatever she was really feeling. Mangrove, on the other hand, was a resigned blue, sky blue. Um, alright. Do your best, Glory said, and thanks and stuff. King Kaju stifled a laugh. Wow, said Mangrove. I feel so moved. <laughs> Queen Magnificent beckoned imperiously, and two portly rain wings flew up beside her, carrying a low table carved from a single log of mahogany. Mahogany. Arranged neatly on top of five nuts, each polished brown and about the size of a dragon eye. This contest has five parts, each related to the special talent of, talents of our tribe, said Queen Magnificent. You assign one team member per part, and whichever team wins three out of five contests, contests wins the crown. She pointed a shark, a sharp, <laughs> she pointed a sharp claw at the first nut. Venom targeting. She pointed to the second, a flower hunt. The third, treetop race. The fourth, fruit gathering. The last nod she picked up and turned over in her front talons. And naturally, there must be a camouflage competition. We are Raywings after all. 
She sat it down again with a toothy smile. Let's start the fruit, fruit gathering. So the competition So the competitors can work on it while we finish the other contests. Certainly, said Handsome. Quite logical, it is a very straightforward contest. Each dragon has one hour to collect as many different types of fruit as he or she can find. The ones the one who comes back with the most very variety wins. Dazzling will compete for our side, Magnificent said, sweeping one wing toward the portly queen. And for yours? <laughs> Glory studied her own dragons, beating back the anxiety that threatened to climb up his scales. The contest all featured brainwing skills, so on one tal on one talent, she had outwitted the Magnificent by choosing Rainwings instead of her friends. But on the other talent, she barely knew her teammates. She had no idea what they were good at. <sighs> Alright, Glory said to them, keeping her voice low. Who would do that? Who would who should do what? Jambu, you teach tree gliding. Are you fast? Can you do the treetop race? Of course! Her brother said, glowing with bright pink enthusiasm. Give me the flower one, said Tamarin. If it's about flowers, I can do it. Glory hesitated. She said, flower hunter. I know flowers, Tamarin insisted. Give her a chance, said a voice in Glory's said, It's what a good queen would do. All right, Glory glanced at the row of nuts on the table, thinking through the other contests. Her day of training hadn't exactly left her feeling confident about most of these. I guess I should do the camouflage contest, she has said. I have no idea where to find fruits in the rainforest, and I'm not exactly a venom expert. She thought of the mess she had made everything they put in front of her yesterday. <sighs> Mangrove, I know you're a fruit gatherer, but she cut you... Sorry, but I got the impression from Bromley that Venom practice wasn't going well for you. That's because Bromelade is a slow old baboon, King Kaju said hotly. I'm super great at venom shooting, I swear! Plus, Mangrove can carry more fruit than I can. Glory rubbed her forehead. She only had to win three of the five contests, so after all. All right, she said, turning back to the waiting queens. Mangrove would do the fruit gathering for us. Mangrove spread his wings and bowed to Dazzling. At a signal from Handsome, they both flew off into the trees, heading in opposite directions and sending up tornadoes of tiny crimson butterflies as the wind. Now, said Handsome, he glanced up at the sky and turned in a slow circle so that all the watching dragons could hear him. Next, the treetop race! A test of speed and agility! Magnificent spun one of the nuts up on the table. Excuse it, that means you! And me! Jambu said delightedly. Handsome grinned. I'll never forget the last treetop race I saw. Weren't you in that? He asked Grander. Who was your challenger? No one worth mentioning, Granda said frostily. Frostily, and naturally I won. But you're too old for racing now, Magnificent said dismissively. Granda gave her a wholehearted glare that Magnificent completely missed. The sloth on Exquisite's tail clambered up to her neck as the Silver Queen stepped forward. Sorry. She dipped her wings so the other two sloths could slide off into the onto the vines. Strong shoulders, Gloria noticed. Big wings. I bet she's fast. Jambu looked a bright pink monkey. Jambu looked like a bright pink monkey next to the sleek silver dragoness. 
Handsome pointed up at the treetops surrounding the arboretum. A small platform about three dragons wide was set in the high branches. Peach-colored flowers studded the dark wood planks, tied in, tied in bunches with strands of silver sloth fur. That is the start and end of the race, he said. You will fly three times around the arboretum. Arboretum. You'll fly three times around the arboretum. Staying outside the ring of trees. If you fly inside the ring, you will be disqualified. If you touch your opponent, you will be disqualified. As long as you stay outside your ring, outside the ring, you may take any path around, but you must touch down on the platform as you complete each each circuit. Understood? Got it, Jambu said, flexing his wings. Exquisite didn't answer. She had her front talons curled around her two, her two slots and was cooing at them as they clambered over her paws. Your Majesty, said Handsome, and then caught himself. Uh, this is, that is, I mean, exquisite. Do you understand the rules? Of course, she said, disentangling her pets. She set the third one down next to them and stroked their hats. I'll be back in a moment, darlings. I just have to win this race for Auntie Maggie. Oh, stop calling me that, Magnificent said crossly. I'm nobody's auntie. Certainly not a bunch of sloths. And this isn't just for me, you big furhead. It's your throne too. There, there, exquisite said to her sloths, who had curled up in a sleepy pile of fur. Auntie Maggie isn't mad at you. She says in a bad temper because she has to actually do something today. In a loud whisper that absolutely everyone could hear, she added, Besides, she's jealous that you are all so much prettier than her, Sloth. Magnificent snarled in a very unqueenly way and shot a dark look at the three Sloths, as if she might throw them off the arborism while Exquisite was racing. Good luck, Glory said to Jambo. Please win. That's the plan, he said cheerfully. He followed Handsome and Exquisite up to the platform, then leaned over the edge and waved at the crowd of dragons around the edges of the arboretum. Sunny and several other dragons waved back. It occurred to Glory to wonder who everyone was rooting for. Did anyone want her to win? Did they know what that would mean or about all the things she wanted to change about their world? Her gaze swept across the rain wings, the tribe that might soon be hers. She tried to read their scales, but as far as she could tell, today most of them had chosen their color had chosen their colors for their looks, as though they were showing off at a party. The only emotions she spotted were bright yellow bursts of excitement in their scales here and there. And she had a feeling they'd be like that about every anything new that happened. Handsome stepped onto a branch snap shaped like a coiling dragon tail and spread his wings. Start when you hear the two can call, he said to Jambu and Exquisite. Don't forget the rules. Ready and caw! Glory was so startled by the sound that came out of his throat that she missed the beginning of the race. Handsome had perfectly imitated the noises she'd been hearing from the big-beaked birds. If that was another rainwing talent, it was one she'd never even thought of trying before. Dang. Exquisite shot ahead of Jambu, swinging smoothly from branch to vine to branch. Her tail was longer than Jambu's, giving her a wider swing and farther reach, but his now but his narrower wings helped him dive between some tangles of branches that she had to maneuver around, and by the time they got back to the platform for the first time, his snout was almost brushing her tail. Kill Jambu! Sunny yelled from his spot on the walkway. You're going to win! You're going... You're going to win! You're the fastest dragon in the forest! Woohoo! King Kajun nudged Tamarin, and they both started hooting and shouting as well. 
Personally, Glory thought that much noise would have been an annoying distraction, but it seemed to add wind to Jambo's wings. He banked around a trunk, dodged a loop of his, his hibiscus covered wines, and shot past Exquisite on the outside. Well, if it works, Glory thought. Yay! She hollered. Jambo is the best. Uh, you're an awesome glider! Good at uh, flying! Yay! <laughs> oh, oh, you awkward dragonist. She caught Tsunami giving her an amused look and stuck out her tongue at the sea wing. Jambu brushed the platform a second time with his claws and took off again. A few moments later, Exquisite thudded down in the same spot and gave chase. Her wings thump pumped and her brow was furrowed angrily. Glory's heart pounded as she watched them swirl through the trees. One more circuit. If Jambu could stay ahead just a bit longer, he'd win. I'm sorry, I'm reading ahead. <laughs> in there she dug her claws into the vines below her wishing she could be up there giving him her speed somehow jambu ricocheted off a tree and dipped through a hole in the branches he veered around the last curve and suddenly flung his wings up to stop his momentum he thrashed in place for a time for a moment and glory saw a vine wound around his neck he twisted backward gasping for air and flailed to the side with a horrible lurch in her stomach Glory watched Jambu tip over, crossing into the ring of trees. At the same time, Exquisite whisked past him and landed neatly on the platform. She lifted her wings and turned in a triumphant circle as deep blue-purple waves whooshed through her scales. But Glory had seen something else too. That vine hadn't appeared out of nowhere. Something was scurrying away from the spot where Jambu had nearly strangled himself. Several somethings, in fact, with shaggy silver fur. End of chapter 30. Oh dear! They're cheating! Oh, they're cheating. Oh! <laughs> Oh dear! She is. I wonder if that gets them disqualified. <laughs> but I've left us off on a cliffhanger again! I'm so freaking sorry! But there's only three chapters left. As well as the pro. Not prologue, the epilogue, and the snippet of the next book. Which means either they're going to lose, and they're going to try and save the rain, the last rain wings by themselves, or they're going to, or Gloria's going to win, and she's going to rally up the rest of the night wings and go on a rescue mission. A lot can happen in three chapters. But oh dear, <laughs> I really hope Glory wins. I really do. She's gonna win, isn't she? Yeah, she's gonna win. Cause like Exquisite had like a lot of slots. So maybe I don't know. I don't know really. But she has a lot of slots. And if they try and like cheat every challenge, huh? Cause, huh? Well, I'm rooting for you, Glory. Well, yeah, I, I actually think I'm going to take. The last of the book tomorrow instead of Wednesday. And so if 
my sister actually doesn't have any, um, anything to do Wednesday evening, I can just take a chat in stream. There. And try and get the, uh, baby dino out of the egg. Then. No promises. No. But I will be streaming the last of the book tomorrow instead of Wednesday. I'm going to have to change up my schedule a bit. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. It's reading instead of Monday, Wednesday, Friday. But after tomorrow's stream, and maybe Wednesday's stream, I'm not making no promises, but if there's no stream Wednesday, then after tomorrow's stream, I'll be going on a little vacation to, because as I said in the beginning, I think I said in the beginning, I'm going to um, my spare parents for Easter. They've known me my whole life. Um, they went to school with my parents. They met through them and all that jazz. Um, yeah. I'm going there for Easter and I, it's just going to be a chill few days. Three days. I'm going there Thursday. Um, Thursday to Saturday. And just gonna have fun, really. So there's going to be no streams during that time. Um, <laughs> and but I'll finally be able to get stuff for Bones Speed A box. The three Bs, Bones Speed A box. <laughs> um, and I am going to get bleach for my hair and purple hair dye so I can finally get it purple again so I can finally get it purple this was supposed to be purple when I dyed it this color this color was supposed to be purple but instead it failed miserably and turned blue and now it's fading to green because it was only semi-permanent <sighs> yeah Don't worry, I won't be reading with the Wings of Fire books without you. I'll only be reading the Legends book, which predates these books in the universe, anyways. <laughs> but it has been an hour and a half, about. I think that's actually the fastest we we have gone through five chapters. That's pretty cool. But I think I'll be going back to um, Minecraft now. I got a lot of projects on my hand. But I got a puppy. Which I'm really happy about. I don't know what to name it though. And I need to change up the roof of my house because that just looks bad. It is now. Oh, yeah. I would love to stream Minecraft, but this the stream quality just gets super bad and laggy when I try. So I'm really sorry that I can't do that. But um, I'll, oh, oh yeah, I'll also be buying uh, Undertale and see if Steam will cooperate with me. Um, so I'll stream Undertale. We'll be playing Undertale, hopefully, if all things go well. <sighs> But we'll see. Um, hello, 
really got much else today. Just pretty chill, got not a lot of energy. My depression just went and said, yeah. Energy, what's who she never heard of her. What can I do? But I really hope you guys enjoyed watching me. Like, I know it's, it's not really the most um, popular thing, like reading books. It's not really the most popular thing to do on stream. I'm no gamer. I just gonna say that I'm no gamer. I got basically no knowledge about computers or anything technological about that. Like that. I love animals. I'm going to study to become a zoologist, so I'm not the most interesting person to watch on Twitch. To watch stream. But yeah, what can you do? But I will see you guys tomorrow. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Or evening. Depending on where you are. Eh, the time zones. It is 10.30 for me. P.M. 10.30 p.m. for me, so, yeah, um, so, it is evening for me, <laughs> but, yeah, I hope you've had a great start on the weekend, to the weekend, <laughs> and take care of yourselves, drink a lot of water, eat good food, be kind to yourselves. We don't do much of that these days. It's all work, 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 stress, stress, stress. And no time to rest or appreciate yourself. I know. Experienced that myself, and that's probably one of the reasons why my depression went off the charts last year. It's actually a year ago since my depression really started playing up. And it got super bad. But, yeah. Just take care of yourselves, okay? Just say, you're worth it. All of you. Mwah. But yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Come fresh, come clean. Hug your stuffies for me. Bye.